you're probably wondering if you've clicked on the wrong video because these scenes look like they belong in a tourism video, not a hunting video. Well, today's episode is going to be a really cool one for a number of reasons. We're going to be showing footage from two different hunting trips today, filmed a couple months apart, and the reason that they've been combined is that they were so similar. Both took place on properties right against the warm water of the Indian Ocean coast in the Eastern Cape of South Africa. Both feature meat hunts for impala and give you a very realistic look at what a traditional hunt amongst friends looks like here. And yes, this means board shorts and t-shirts and none of that choreographed garbage that you see on TV. And lastly, the reason why this one took so long to publish, both of these hunts feature the new 3 to 18 Element Optics Titan, a scope that, as part of Element Optics, I've been testing thoroughly for more than a year. In fact, I believe that these are the first animals to ever be taken with this model, so it's a bit of history in the making right here. Our first hunt takes place at Kingsview Safaris, only about 20 minutes drive from my house. Yes, I live in this paradise. This is a property that sits between a mountain range and the ocean and has a little bit of everything. Dune fields, thick bush, open grassland, river valleys and a huge variety of animals. I've been invited here for a cull hunt. Jono, who runs this outfit and manages the animals here, often donates meat to a local school for the boarding students and today I've been asked to come shoot a few impala. This means that we'll be going for headshots only and that of course presents a challenge. We need to get relatively close. Wanting to get our two animals down before it gets too hot, we put on a stalk as soon as we see our first herd and it's not long until I have a chance at a first shot. And here's why headshots are so risky. This bullet strikes exactly where I aimed and passes straight through the head, but on the replay I can see it's ever so slightly too low. With a bigger caliber or a more frangible bullet, this would have probably done the job and dropped him on the spot, but we see him stand up again and I have to take a follow-up shot. It's not pretty and I hate wounding animals, but I'd rather show you the reality of hunting and what can go wrong than to pretend that it always runs perfectly as planned. I'm not going to show you the animal up close or the replay of the second shot because it's probably a little too graphic for YouTube but we're pretty happy to have the first one down and with Impala number one loaded onto the back of the bucky it's back to work as we move towards a new area in search of another herd. I'm not sure I've ever seen so many animals and such a diversity of animals in such a small area. Being right along the coast, this is quite a green area and this gives it really good carrying capacity with plenty of grass for the grazers and plenty of leaves for the browsers. From the hilltops looking north, we get a nice view of the mountains where we have fangboss, protea bushes and forest and looking south, we see the ocean with yellow sand, coastal bush and yet more animals. We head out for a walk through one of the more open areas using the small patches of bush as cover and eventually come across another herd of impala. There are quite a few nice big rams in this group but being a meat hunt we are going to rather go for one of the smaller rams with bad genetics. We move within range and there's not much chance for a prone shot this time so it's going to be a bit of a challenge. This Impala Ram is about 150 meters away and standing off sticks with the wind blowing was not easy. Trigger timing is everything for a shot like this and thankfully I hold my nerve. <laughs> Shaking around there a bit but 
that animal was facing directly towards me so I knew that you know, wherever I hit it would be a pretty safe shot. So, yeah, that was a good shot. Dr. Cool. tracks. Nice shooting. Well, no, nice. Good, thank you. Glad to get that one done. <laughs> well, awesome. So it's been a good morning so far. Um, two impala down, they nice eating size and you know with the the drought and everything it's good to keep the numbers down so we've done a great job with that this morning this is an awesome setup three to eighteen is a nice um nice magnification range i only had it on on uh, 16 times uh, which is more zoom than i would normally have for a hunt like this I, I had it on 16 times just to get the scope cam to work a bit better the scope cam set up for higher zoom but normally shooting off uh, sticks or lying down on an animal the size from less than 200 meters you would probably want to bring the magnification down a bit but awesome nice to get those animals down and as usual as usual 260 remington has performed like a boss and done the job With our quota of two animals done and dusted, we begin to head down towards the valley to just enjoy the rest of the day relaxing in the shade. One of the best parts about hunting in Africa is the part when you're not hunting because you're able to enjoy the insane variety of wildlife on display without the added stress of trying to find or shoot something. With the Impala now hanging in the cold room, we take a drive along the river and we see more Impala, we see bush buck and we see a lot of Niala. We actually filmed an episode for Jono's podcast and you can find this podcast on my channel. I'll leave a link below. But once our lunch and chat in the shade was done, we took one last drive towards the dunes. All I can say is, man, what a place. There are very few properties on earth, let alone in South Africa, that can tick all the boxes like this. I feel so privileged to have been able to come out here, so big thanks to Kingsview Safaris for the invitation, and you should definitely check them out in the video description below. Funny enough, although I say that there are very few places like this, we're about to head about 200 kilometers east to another piece of paradise on the coast, for a hunt that you might say is surprisingly similar. It's time for round two. The next hunt takes us to Hope Farm, a property right on an area known as the Sunshine Coast, which belongs to a friend of mine. This stretch of coast along the warm Indian Ocean gets the most hours of sunlight per year, hence its name, and more sunlight equals more growth. This is a very green and fertile area covered with indigenous forest and rolling hills and really good fishing and hunting. Today I've been invited here along with a few other friends to shoot some impala and what you're about to see is very typical of an informal relaxed meat hunt. Let's call it a very realistic insight into what a hunting trip amongst friends looks like. The day starts early with a quick cup of coffee at sunrise before hopping on the back of the bucky and heading through the chicory fields. The animals you see here are Araby. They look kind of similar to Impala from far away and it takes a bit of time to actually glass around and spot a small herd of actual Impala on the hillside. I can see those two there. What's at the bottom here in the chicory? Okay. Unfortunately, we were a little too slow to set up on these and they move over the hill and out of our view. 
it's pretty clear that we're going to have to work hard today. We make our way up to the top of the hill and we come up with a rough plan. Myself and Jason would go one way and yeah. another two guys, Luke and Brass, would head down the opposite side of the hill. The side that I'm on overlooks some chicory fields and we sit here for a while hoping that something will make its way down. But unfortunately, we are left empty handed and eventually make our way back up the hill to meet back up with the other group, who also returns empty handed. I've always felt a little more comfortable taking shots from a little bit further, giving me time to set up in a prone position and pick my moment, as opposed to stalking in close and rushing a shot. So I change strategy a bit and find a comfortable position. I spot a small group of Impala and range them at 400 meters. This is pretty much a chip shot for the 260 Remington in conditions like this. And having made turret tape already, it's a very easy setup process. The animal had no idea I was watching and it was just a case of waiting for a good broadside profile. I reload in case I get another opportunity, but the rest run off. I'm very happy with the shot. It landed right where I wanted. I know this is a meat hunt and the plan was always to take headshots, but at this distance it can also be so risky and I'd rather take the safe option and potentially lose a little bit of meat than risk wounding an animal and perhaps wasting all the meat. I head out for another attempt and this time I set up on a hill overlooking the coast. From this high position I hope to spot another group of Impala and sort of repeat the effort from earlier. So we've got three guys out here on the farm. Hopefully the Impala come past this way. But yeah, there's a lot of bush here, so they could be anywhere, really have no idea. But yeah, 260's done its job today already. But look at this view. Oh my word. It is just insanely beautiful. I do get one opportunity, but I don't want to shoot on the horizon with the possibility of people behind and when they move over, I call it a day. Either way, I've got one animal down and the 3 18 Titan has been a dream to use. So I've ticked all the boxes. Thankfully, Luke and Jason have had some success too. Both headshots, one with Luke's 260 and another with the 22 250. With a good day of hunting done and dusted, we're able to sort of wind down and relax a bit. And relaxation on this farm means a drive down to the beach for a swim and some fishing. And the beach isn't only fun during the day. A night drive through the forest and up onto the dunes is always a great way to wrap up an eventful weekend. And we end off this episode with diesel engines purring, snorkel slurping in air and spotlights illuminating the sandy tracks ahead. Once again, thanks for watching this one. Please consider subscribing if you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you next time.